Hello. Hello. Right, 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 right. Sorry about that. Mm. Don't know why I'm on there. Hi, David. Is that you in Green Valley? Yes. Uh, oh. Give me one second. <laughs> no worries. I joined, but I have to leave. I haven't used Zoom in a while. Sorry. Let me. Okay. Okay. You guys can kick the other one. I, I just think I, I didn't leave completely. I just closed uh, the... We can hear you all good, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Do you work with Max? Sorry? Do you work with Max? Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, I'm awesome. using SF though, and I'm in Seattle, but yeah, we're on the oh. same team. So. Gotcha. Um, thought it was about time I joined in on one of these meetings. And... Yeah, well, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's joining today, but... Um, I think he said he can't make it today. Um... Okay. Yeah. Cool. I will probably don't have too much context on how these meetings go, but I will sit in, listen, try to absorb, and then maybe once Max is back, he can start getting me like onboarded on ways I can help out and, and get more involved. Yeah, that's awesome. Are you going to be working on the open source uh, side um, of KT? I'm not sure exactly at the moment, but as we're kind of staffing the team more right now, mm -hmm. I don't know if, how much context you guys have, but um, the previous team that he was working on, the um, the Google side of the product got shifted onto our team, so he moved on our team. So we're just oh, trying to staff staff uh, that product and staff people to work on Gatekeeper right now. So. Mm -hmm. Um, gotcha. Right now, it's just me, Max, and uh, another person. We just mm -hmm. got one other person to join us. Um, but until we get a little bit more staffing, I'll be kind of trying to help out a little bit more. Um, hopefully, I can get involved as much as possible. But we'll see how that balance works out. I, I think Max still has to talk with our manager about. Yeah, it um, makes sense. Yeah, we would love to have you, have you in the open source side uh, if you yeah, can. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, we no, used to work I'm, with uh, Davis and um yes. alex and, and alex yeah um yeah yeah andrew I... was there also right he was also from who sorry andrew andrew oh yeah and andrew too yeah yeah peabody peabody yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 he worked on like yeah. the content stuff right yeah he, he, i think he's on a separate org too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean I, I have a feeling i'm going to be joining in I think Max has like a like six month plan for me to kind of get more involved and and like oh, awesome. focus a little <laughs> bit more on the open source side. So hopefully I can be of help. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Yi. Uh, welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm uh, doing okay. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I think the biggest item we have today is uh, release. I'm checking with if Rita is able to make it. Uh, I don't know if Rita will be able to make it. I can hear back. Uh, we can talk about the release, though. Um, I think, Jay, you had the one PR. 
yeah so, so open, right? yeah. rita and max both lgtm did uh so i'm waiting on you and i have followed up with one more pr to move uh, uh experimental care test native validation flag to beta which is basically cell validation to beta we decided to move it to beta a couple of meetings ago um so it should be a minor review and okay yeah i'll take a look at it after this uh call um other than that, are we okay to, to cut it after three, three, yeah. 3472 and 3476 merges? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, and then we are enabling the, by default, the web. Uh, okay, cool. Do we want to change the name because it be experimental? Web. I am not sure if we can change the yeah, name. I don't know if like... changes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so web generation should... is still turned off. This is just the validation in, in Gatekeeper. Yeah. I think we should not put experimental in the names. Uh, it's because we cannot change <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a bad one. And I think we may have uh it does in the food with uh, generation flag names also like it starts with default create vap for mm -hmm. template and default create vap for constraint so that default part i don't know yeah i, I think that that one is probably more okay than just the yeah. experimental because experimental it'll be yeah i mean we can drop the flag um but then People can't won't be able to turn it off if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll review after uh, this call. Um, I think we, we we also put triage in the agenda, so I'll put the notes in there. Release. Release seventeen. Oh, RC. Oh, um, yeah, we had triage on the call too, but I don't know if we can do that without Max and Rita. Yeah. So I'll, I will move it to the next one. Uh, oh, uh, anybody else had any agenda items? This would be a good time to add it. Hey, folks. Um, I have a question on the 317, if you guys don't mind. For a release candidate, um, is, there, is there like a, a good way to see a preview of the features that are being released with this release um, before it actually, you know, is official? Um, and then part two of that kind of question is similar. Are your last uh, several um, releases really focusing on the VAP capability of, of Kubernetes. And, and Jay, I, I saw your uh, YouTube or cloud native um, session that was really awesome to to hear and and, uh, and follow. Love how you explained um, the capabilities of Gatekeeper with, with that integration. Um, I, I can't wait for at the ability at my, my, my firm to, to try them out. We're not there yet, but we're gonna get there. So I think I saw you sh shake your head. Um, Sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but you said uh, it sounds like the last few releases will focus more on, on the VAP capabilities, right? Okay. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, how do I start okay. touch? Yeah, I use I do start touch so people can remember. All right, thank you, man. Um, so, how how do I look at the RC, or how do you recommend? Um, do I wait for the RC to be cut to like know what kind of features are coming out? So I want to get like yeah. a preview. Yeah, and also, are you interested more in like release notes type of? Thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So once we publish the RC, the release notes will be in the gatekeeper release page. 
Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, it'll be similar to what we have uh, in the past. Um, yeah. And then yeah. for the, so uh, in an RC, it will be exactly the same thing image wise. You can pull Got from it. the Docker Hub, it'll just be uh, RC. You can also pull the Helm charts, so same thing, nothing changes. Uh, so for yeah. RC, what we do usually is we want folks to um, try it out and give us any like feedback if something is broken. So that's sort of where we, we don't do any futures. Uh, we kind of it's like a socket for like a week or so. Uh, and then just to get a chance for folks to communicate, hey, this broke my X or whatever. Hopefully not, but j just in case. Um, and yeah, so you'll be able to see the notes and everything. Oh, and then uh, for the stable releases, we had the notable changes uh, field. So those are like the bigger changes or items. Uh, so in this case, like beta uh, wrap uh, future will be a, um, a notable change. Got it. Um, I, I did have one more, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys are tracking, but I think it, 131 was supposed to, I don't, if I look at Kubernetes, kind of their release notes and all that stuff, um, the mutation VAP was supposed to get some work on it, but I don't yeah. think it did. it. Um, or I could be wrong if, if you guys know that answer. Uh, is Gatekeeper, once that is maybe more in alpha or beta, like, are you guys, Gatekeeper going to try to follow suit and um, su support that in the integration with, with Gatekeeper and that as the engine in the constraint template. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We haven't really discussed that one. How, like, how would it, that go? I think it was still pretty experimental in Kubernetes last time I looked at it. Right, right, right. And then yeah. I think we, okay. we might do a similar thing with Gatekeeper with what we did with VAP. I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, I think we yeah. need to take a look at the states of the, um, what, what was it called? Map, I think. What, uh, yeah, something yeah like that makes that. sense. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then see like how would we want to align it, and I yeah. I know we talked with Max before also to to see how Kubernetes native mutation handles certain things, so we can also align Gatekeeper's mutation with that also. Uh, but I think we just haven't taken a deeper look at it to to say anything specific about it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And then my last thing, if anybody knows on this call, is <clears throat> we have an implementation implementation of Gatekeeper that's using uh, the replication uh, capability, but not the new sync sets. Is the uh, advice to go to the uh, sync sets approach and in either of the two capabilities, I haven't been able to find out a way. Is there a way to inspect Gatekeeper pods to know, okay, how many items it's synced and cached and what kind of items like man how do you do that yeah you you can dump the the, the cache in former cache mm. uh, okay I think there is a, like a we have docs for that somewhere uh let me see um yeah so accessing replicated data okay here it is um yeah, so take a look at it. So you can inspect the data that inventory, uh, and then you can get all the the seed resources. Oh, okay. So this would be within a constraint template, uh, regular mm -hmm. policy. You dump out. Yep. The... Mm -hmm. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Fair enough. So I would have to write the policy in a way that returns back the the object of all the yeah things. if you looked at I mean, obviously don't i mean just if for, for testing you can do that yeah, um, yeah 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 and then you can basically dump it out dump it out and just make sure that you are aware that if you say syncing secrets then everything will be visible in there uh right. so don't, don't do that <laughs> yeah all right thank you thank you that that was all for me guys thank you Oh, I just saw Rita's message. Um, yeah, Ellen was asking about the the Kubernetes mutation earlier. Uh, how would we align with that? Uh, and then I think they just config and sync just now. Yeah, how do we align with that? We're waiting for that for that to make decisions, and then we will align to it. 
yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah but if you are if you have strong opinions about it um i think it would be good to join that discussion um and that cap uh do you know what i'm talking about on the Kubernetes side, like yes, I'm, that's right. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the way I, I came around this is there was a local Kubernetes meetup here in Atlanta, and and uh, the host mentioned that capability, or actually like one thirty one capabilities. And uh, when I looked at this really nice dashboard that he shared, I saw that capability, but it looked like it was pulled out. If I read the tagging correctly, so. Um, but Rita, to your point, I'm not too familiar with those discussions or how to be part of those discussions. Um, yeah, it's okay. I, I don't really have a, an opinion to be, I'm just like seeing if how it's yeah, gonna work. No, no worries. Um, let me link it here. Uh, I think most people are really aware of this, um, mm -hmm. but this is sort of where the discussion nice. is happening. Um, and it's, you know, it's alpha in 130, but I think if we have strong opinions, this is a time to raise flag, yeah. Because anything flag, before it hits beta, it's um, not hard to change. Okay. Yeah. And is this is this the um, what like SIG or working group would that be? Uh, this is both the API machinery and SIG auth. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Cool. Uh, yes. Yeah, and um, maybe for a uh, uh, gatekeeper um, 318 release, we should try this and identify the the diff between gatekeeper mutation and this, and then give feedback. Um. All right. Let me add an issue to this. Thanks for the reminder. I've been meaning to come back to this. It's just so many things been going on. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it is called map. So we'll wrap in map. Can you guys add this this like whatever was discussed in the notes? Just yeah. agenda. I can add it now. We use an agenda to like track of what was discussed, right? Um, oh, sorry. Any other topic? Uh, do we want to do the triage or do we want to wait for Max next week? Um, I actually have an, a question about the VAP uh, feature real quick. Um, I think I would much rather use this time to, for release uh, if if you don't mind. And then we can come back to triage next round, next week. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I think J Jay has two PRs open. I documented in the uh, meeting notes, so 24, 76, and 72. Uh, so we should be good to cut the release after both merges. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I think I mentioned to earlier, we're not in the call. Uh, it sounds like we're still keeping the, the flag as experimental. Uh, so that in the future, it might be a good idea to not name the flags experimental. Just so they don't be forever yeah. experimental. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Good, good call out. Um, I guess like it's more that you only need the flag if you need to opt out. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I agree. But we we'll, we'll, we can remove experimental and it'll always be experimental. Yeah. I'm, unless we take away the opt out. Maybe. Unless we take out the flag. Yeah. Which in theory it's possible. It's just you don't have a way. Let you don't give users a way out. That's bad. Yeah. Um, and how will that work with like upgrades? If somebody did define the flag and then now the flag is removed. I well, think that's we, need why to, we don't remove flag. Yeah, I think we will need to do something in the to be not no up basically in, in the logic. So we cannot ever remove that flag. Yeah. 
Yeah. Remember Jay has a PR to remove some stuff for um Bob so yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we were like, don't remove the yeah. flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can't uh, remove flags. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I need to modify that PR and fall back for the flag for global behavior. I think that's the approach to go rather than removing. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you see in Kate's, right, we never remove flags. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, if you don't mind, can I talk about the issue that I saw when I was testing this? Well, it's, I don't know, like, I, I feel like it's by design, maybe, I'm not sure, but, so I started with no generation of VAP, right? So I don't, I don't use, um, actually, let me share my screen real quick. Um, just for those people who might be like, what is this VAP feature and why do I care? And by the way, I love all the people on the call who's not maintainers, yay. I've always loved seeing that. Okay, let me know when you can see my screen. Got it. Yep. Okay, so I started this without the like enforcement, like without this change, right? And I did it without um without the uh, generate VAP thing, right? Um, sorry, I am not being coherent. Give me one second. This is why I was late to the meeting, for what it's worth. Um, okay, so I was like kind of playing around with this. And so you, you, you know how we took out the label, right? Um, so I apply this change without this. And then it, it worked as expected, right? Audit still works, uh, that validation still works going through the gatekeeper webhook. And then I added this and then I didn't make any change to this. Now, my expectation is it would just work, like meaning it would actually just create the binding because the template basically says, please generate the VAP for me. I feel like that's easier. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the implementation, but the current behavior is I add this and then I don't make any change here. I don't, I see the VAP getting generated, right? But I don't see the binding getting generated. I feel like, is that a bug or is it intended? It seems, seems like, like a bug. bug. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I don't get it. Why? Because we are only checking for uh, templates with cell code in it. We are not specifically looking for generate VAP field is there or That's not. why I'm like, maybe maybe just try it on your own and see where the bug is. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So so good that we agree that's a bug, not yeah. the intended behavior. Um, but obviously, as soon as I add this, everything works as intended, right? Um, now, again, if I just add this, obviously I forgot <laughs> we wouldn't get audit. And I was like, why do I see the audit? So I think that the, these are the type of reactions that I think end users will have as they do this migration, right? So I think this is why, you know, the like as minimal as possible for enabling the user without them having to do anything is great. Um, so I guess like, to you know in the docs we do talk about like the default flags right so in the future if they just add the default flag then users don't have to do anything here right um but as they go through the migration where they would have like that plus gatekeeper at the same time perhaps then this is where i was hoping that users don't have to do anything on the binding and this is all they need to do uh, can you talk about the, the constraint? You, the, yeah. I was a bit confused so about the constraint. This. So you see this diff, right? Yeah, yeah. So initially, I don't have enforcement action at all. And my understanding is that would generate the VAP binding. So even for that, we have a flag, right? Like default create yeah. VAP, uh, VAP binding for constraint. Okay. That's why I asked if it's an intended behavior. I feel like that's not a great experience because that's like forcing me to use this scope enforcement action feature or to change my default, which I don't actually want to change. So I, I actually don't want to change the default flag, right? I don't want to generate binding for everything. Does that make sense? Is, isn't this a flag issue, Jay? I mean, if 
if users don't want to use the flag and not you want to use scoped enforcement action how would we even know that user wants to use vap well this was the old behavior right with the label is that it would inherit from the constraint so the constraint author says like this should be a that like uh validation right and I, I guess your point is like right now we're being explicit right we're saying the constraint author has to opt in so that's 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 what the discussion was with max as well right like right should we follow the intention of author uh constraint author or like should we like, should the constraint author know if the generate on like generate on generation on on template yeah. is true or not and stuff like like yeah. all, the, all the discussions around it so after it i think this is the intended behavior where we rely on whatever constraint author and the flag says rather than like looking at template and assuming that they want to use vap i think there are two competing uh like sort of requirements, right? One is I want to slowly adopt VAP uh, as the validating uh, mechanism, right? And, and therefore we want a way where the constraint users could do the rollout slowly, right? So that's one requirement. And then the second requirement is, I feel like they're competing is as a constraint author, or template off author, like how do I make sure I can migrate with it, like with minimal effort? <laughs> yeah. Because the experience I have is the only way I can use this now is by do by using scope enforcement actions. Yeah. And the likelihood that I'm gonna forget one of the the default like enabled enforcement enforcement actions really high. <laughs> Like I, for example, when I did this, I forgot audit. <laughs> so if if you added an enforcement action denied, that then we wouldn't generate the VAP. It wouldn't. So that's that's why we defined a global flag, yeah. right? To to yeah. make sure we don't blindly generate bindings, yeah. and then protect it behind a flag. Except that flag is all or nothing. Yeah. Which I. Yeah. But I mean, if you want granular, then this is the experience. Then the, the you that, that's what I was saying. I think it's a flag issue. Um, but how do we solve that? Why? What do you mean by flag issue? Do, what's the flag's default? Oh, false. False. We don't yeah. generate but by binding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Also, you're saying the default value should be true. I mean, if if you want that experience, then yes. So if you user as generates VAP to the template and then the flag is true, then it's mm -hmm. automatically generate for everything without you doing the, the scope the EA. So. That's that's the thing, right? Like now the control of that flag comes on to whoever installs gatekeeper rather than whoever yeah. implements or adds template and is defined by that that user rather than the template author. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's different personas. Um, I mean, I feel like setting the default to true might, but I'm, I, I'm still thinking, but might be okay because we always, like, it, it wouldn't be actually generating if constraint didn't have VAP enabled or or there's no cell, right? So we, we have, like, triple layer protection to make sure, oh, well, binding will only get created if all the conditions are met. And then it would make sure that users don't have to think about having to do this. Because I do feel like most of the population probably wouldn't care about this. Like this is only a small set of users who want to restrict or like limit what the default uh, enforcement actions, right? When they want to scope down. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that, yeah. So what are the risks of 
turning that default flag to true? Uh, one is you'd be generating uh, binding without uh, admission policy. So there'll be like uh, bindings without any parent admission policy. That would be one. I don't think if API is not an available, we wouldn't be generating binding. So we are safe there. Well, no, but we wouldn't do that if the the template it is doesn't doesn't have this right. We don't check for uh, that oh, fit. Don't. We just but check we do for... check if the VAP, but we do check if VAP is there or we don't check if VAP is there. I thought we did. No, we just check if the template has cell source in it. Oh, I think I used to check it. Maybe you removed it. Hmm. Earlier we were checking yeah, for the label, was... right? Hmm? That the the gatekeeper use VAP label. We checked for that one. Yeah. Uh, but then we moved to checking uh, for cell source. Cell no, source. but I mean, I... Didn't we check the API? I remember I check if the VAP actually, like the yeah. the VAP CRD is there. I thought we did. But I yeah. Might be remembering. Did, was that removed? Uh, do you mean the API? Yeah. No, no, no not the API. I'm the, talking the, about the... No, the, the VAP resource, the... CRD, I mean, not CRD, but I, I mean, I'll say API. The actual VAP, yeah. Yeah. Like, like this guy, um, hold on a second. Oh, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry. It's here somewhere. So this guy. So basically before we create binding, we will actually check if this is there. I don't think that was there before. Okay, I... I don't right. think I removed checking for VAP. But we, we do check the API, right, Jay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we do check the... Oh, okay, that's what API. I remember. Okay. We, I don't think we ever checked for... But that's different. Yeah. That's different. Um... I mean, I guess this matches Kubernetes, right? So like the Kubernetes, you can also have a binding without any VAP. Yeah. I know, and, and I didn't like that because... <laughs> I have I have always had a problem with it. It is it is confusing, yeah. Um I really thought I checked it. Um hmm. anyway. Yeah, I'm remembering that what is web API name. Oh yeah, but again that's different. That's like yeah, it's, it's different, yeah. Yeah. Not the, you. You mean the object, not the API. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, let's just come back to the problem at hand, right? So, and then we can deal with like that other behavior later, just to unblock release, I guess. Um, I mean, I don't think we should release if you want to change the behavior because that would be well. If the, if it's really? just a default flag value, it's pretty easy. Uh, I don't know, because that that would like surprise. You think this is a yeah. patch release now? <laughs> change the behavior. I don't think that would be a good idea. Right, right. See. Okay, so then the question is: Do we want to create binding without the VAP? Okay. Yeah, this is more like a just a behavior question. I I mean I think it's fine, but um, I don't know. So I think the easiest thing we set the def the default flag to be true by default. That that basically covers all use cases. Yeah. But the, the, I guess the downside is then everybody is opt in by default, not opt out. Yeah. Sorry, opt out by default, not opt in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But they, like, it, it wouldn't really have like actual, like, yes, the binding would be there, but it wouldn't have actual impact, right? Until, until the user does this. Yeah. Right. So that's the key here. Yeah. 
So I think that we, I, I think it's safe because of that, mm -hmm. because that's an explicit action anyway. Um, so it sounds like you guys think it's okay to have the default for binding as um, true. true. Yeah. I mean, you should check with Max though. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think he's probably going to be okay because he was the one that said it's okay to create binding. I was the one that said yeah. no. Oh, you did you like that? Right? You your one? Huh? <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I still don't like the fact that there's dangling resources. Yeah. Don't get me wrong there, but I'm willing to sacrifice that for ease of use. Right, like me having to do this explicitly to use this feature. I don't like that. I, I, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, because that that means I have to learn two two new things. Yeah, that's just too much. And yeah. most users wouldn't know when you don't have enforcement action uh, specified. What are the default enforcement actions that are applied today? Mm -hmm. They would they wouldn't know that they need to do any of that. And today, if you have both Rego and Cell templates you would have to not only add the generate web, but also do this to your point. Um, yeah, it's not a good experience. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine to make the default flag. Do, Jay, do you have any, any concerns? I don't think so. Yeah, except for like dangling resources, I don't think there is anything else concerning. Okay. I, I just want to call out and, and shout out to Jay. Um, when I watched this video that he recently um, did on this feature, uh, I, it was pretty awesome to see how you guys are generating the wrap and um, bindings automatically, which was the highlight of that video for me. Um, so um, I told them earlier, I'm looking forward to trying to implement and test this stuff out, but Yay. a little far away from that, yeah. Okay. Oh, I should add a link to, to that in the release, uh, in the meeting notes. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let me see. Jay, do you have the link handy somewhere? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, please, please add. So do we want to turn the flag on? Uh, should I make this change in the same PR then? And then ping max? Uh, no, I think you should create a new PR and then discuss it there. I, I, I'm trying to not introduce any new change to yeah. the existing one because that one is ready to ship. Don't yeah, touch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the whole point of this discussion is just to make the transition smooth for end users, right? Um. And if for whatever reason we decide that's not a good idea, then it doesn't impact the existing PR, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other topic? If not, let's, uh, I really want to spend the time on like, thinking about all the like release blocking things that we need to do. I think all yeah, the- so the plan is merge two PRs. I'm going to review after this, this call. And then let's get the PR to Max, see what he thinks. Mm -hmm. And then we cut the RC. Sounds good. And do we... Uh... Do we have any other PR issues remaining for 3.17? No. No? OK, good. I have some PRs on library for web stuff, like a cell stuff, but that can be reviewed later. Yeah, that can be after the release. Those are not blocking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, great. O Opa did release a new version <laughs> again, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Oh, um, oh, you mean, wait, I thought Jay already bumped that. No, they, they just did it again. Uh, oh, like today? No, like last week, maybe? Uh, let me check. Um, 
So that was 67, right? 67, yeah, that one is out now. Oh, oh it's, a, yeah, it's, it's a bad tradition. Yeah. Hmm. It's like a very specific, it's a fix for like a, some, I think it like, looks like an HTTP thing, but so I don't think we need to bump this at all. Okay. All right. Anything else? Cool. Thank you. Bye. See ya.